Salumi, you're welcome. <laughs> How are you doing? Thank you. I'm How is fine. Man. How is lockdown? <laughs> you, guys, you guys must be bored now with all the lockdown and stuff. You can't wait to get out, yeah? Yeah. How are your exams? They were fine. That's great. Good, good, good to see you guys. Yeah. Okay, so we'll 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 start. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, you're so much most welcome to our webinar today. We've had a series of webinars and um, for university preparation. I'm Bolaji Osume, CEO Global International College. I'm really happy to have you guys um, joining us today, parents, students um, who are interested in studying in the US. So today we're going to um, talk a lot about the US. We have some very great people with us. So I'm just going to welcome our eminent panelists. And we have some of our students also who will be talking about the experience they've had in Global International College. And we're really excited also to have um, um, our panelists who are a consultant who works with us from the US, all the way from Maryland, who's with us, who will be talking to us as well. There's a lot of information that you got, garner from what we're doing here. And we hope at the end of the day, you'll be able to take this forward you know, and um, come to Global, enroll in Global for your USA Foundation program. Let me have the slides running, please. So I welcome every one of you. Thank you for joining us. So we'll start now. This will be going on for maybe one and a half hours. And basically at the end of it, we will take questions. But meanwhile, please put your questions in the Q&A if you have questions um, or in the chat so that we can take the questions afterwards. So that whatever you hear, if you have any questions on anything, let us know. Thank you so much. Okay, so it's a virtual information seminar for the USA University Preparation Pathway. Um, Global International College has been preparing students for top universities all over the world. Um, and so we're doing this because everybody knows with COVID, we really cannot do an open day like we normally do at this time of the year. You know, so we had decided that we would do virtual information section for parents and students. And please, if you're on, on the call, please call your friends to join that we've started so we can kick off. Okay. So I'll introduce uh, Chioma Okoronko, who is a U.S. education consultant. She's based in Maryland. She'll be talking to us today. Thank you, Chioma. You're welcome. Uh, Ifnaya Ekweme also is a consultant based, based in Nigeria, and she's an alumni and also alumni parent. One of her children passed through us, but she would probably join us later. You know, she had an emergency. And then, of course, you all know uh, FM Cyrus, Sa, 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 FM. FM has been with us forever. He's been coordinating um, the USA Foundation. So he's a very, very popular person amongst a lot of young people in Lagos, in Nigeria, in fact, also. And he has been doing a wonderful job. A lot of our students have done very well, gone to top schools in the US, and he has been preparing them. So he's going to be talking to us about all of that today. And then, of course, we now have our students, our wonderful students, Adana Aze, who is ready to speak to us. She is a USA Foundation student from Global International College. And Amanda Sabansi, and we have Pelumi as well joining us from Global. Just to tell our audience today the experience in Global, you know, just to share with us a bit. And then after that, when all the talking has been done, we will now take questions and answer your questions. Thank you. So before we go on, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, the next slide, please, about Global College Online. You know, since COVID, everybody knows what happened with COVID. So we had to quickly translate into remote online. So all our students basically had to complete their, um, um, the last session, the third term, and even a little bit of, I think towards the second term, end of second term, remotely online. And so, but with Global, we have been doing this for a while. You know, we've been actually doing virtual learning for quite a while with our Canadian Foundation program. But with the um, US Foundation program, they have to immediately go online. I know they've taken their AP exams online. Um, SATs, because it's not online yet, that hasn't been possible. But in global, what we do is to prepare. Um, in this uh, new normal, we're looking at preparing students on a kind of blended learning. 
So basically, if we don't come back to school, if um, government doesn't say, okay, you can come back to school, because of course everybody knows that Lagos is still quite uh, it's peaking right now. So we, what we do is to say we will continue online, and if we do come back to school, it will be blended. So it's it's much more than just uh, um, an online a school online experience. Our students will be joining us on the platform that we have that is so dynamic. You know, from September, some of them are already joining us for their SATs. We already started classes on SATs, and all those classes will be online for now. Next slide, please. Okay, so our mission and vision at Global International College, that's supposed to be a, a USA Foundation, uh, to deliver the best in curriculum based online education for students anywhere in the world at any time. To make education accessible and affordable for students all over the world. So basically with the um, USA Foundation, we're giving an international foundation, uh, sorry, qualification. Um, a lot of students have, uh, who joined Global the join haven't um, completed the YX, or our students who are in global are still, they've done the, they, they're completing their syllabus, but we do not know when they're going to take exams. So automatically, sometimes this presents a problem. But in global, what we have provided for, please go on, what we have provided for is that you can actually do the American uh, accredited diploma as well. So the American ac accredited diploma is an alternative to YX. And some of our students uh, will do this in grade 12, or we, we start from grade 10 to grade 12, you know. So FM will talk a bit about that, you know. So if you have any friends that want to join Global in September, they can actually come and they're worried about, they don't have, um, with their YX, we can, we can we're taking a mock results for YX to enroll. We have an entrance exam coming up on Saturday at 9 a.m. So we implore our students to join the um, entrance exam. We'll accept the mock results. But going forward, we have a partner in the U.S that we are partnering with a school, a high school in the US, and we're doing the accredited diploma for the USA. So I spoke a bit, I've spoken a bit about our, I just want to talk about a virtual learning environment. So when you come to global, even as you join us in, um, as you join us in June, uh, June, July, even August for the summer, it's going to be a virtual learning environment and it's both synchronous and asynchronous, which means you will have live classes with teachers, and then sometimes you might have to do a project-based work on your own. Um, so that's basically what we have, a blended learning model, the traditional plus the virtual. So you still get to see your teachers, you still get to talk to them, but at the same time also, you still have the opportunity to continue learning on your own at, uh, asynchronously. Okay, next please. So we have a dedicated website that is called WW Global College Online. These are the courses we do on the website. You know, that, that's the platform for online for now. We use Teams and we have a video conferencing. So we have our secondary school, we have our International Medical Foundation, Canadian Foundation, USA Foundation, A-Levels and UK Foundation. So we are the go-to place if you want to prepare for university, even if you're in primary, even if you're in year, year seven. Even if you're in year seven, our focus is always to prepare you to look at what your gifts and your talents are and, and, and prepare you for the country. You know, a lot of our students who come to um, us in global are citizens of the US, they were born there. So it doesn't make sense for them to now go to do UK, UK foundation or A-levels. It's better for them because there's so many benefits for being, uh, of being a citizen of the US. Um, for example, you're, you get uh, state fees, you get to pay state fees and there's other benefits and then you can even apply. I'm sure Chairman will tell us a bit about that later. But there are benefits, there's no point going to go and pay um, 15,000 pounds in uh, the UK when you are a citizen. So there are benefits to actually having that citizenship. Next, please. So some of the short courses we also have, for some people that want to join us for summer courses, we have um, STEM and robotics, we have vocational courses, and for, uh, for our teachers, we have teacher training courses. Vocational courses will be coming up that you can take like photography, um, different courses that you can just, and, and, and we're gonna bring some, we're gonna, introduce and have some um, courses like AI and some other short courses that you can do during the summer just to enhance your skills because that's what everybody's looking for. They're looking at people who are good with robotics, who can code, you know, so we're going to be bringing those short courses on, you know, um, all the technology courses to just improve your skills. Next, please. Okay, so we have digitalized content. Most of our courses are digitalized and they'll be online. 
So when you join global, anywhere in the world, really, literally, you have your course content there, your notes are there, it's been put there, videos are there, everything you need, honestly, to move forward. So that's what we have on the platform. Next, please. Okay, so like I said, we have a blended online learning and we have a, a learning management system that is dynamic through Microsoft. It links us to Microsoft as well. It's a very dynamic platform that our students are learning on. I've spoken about asynchronous and what it's doing is that it's um, allowing our students to be creative. Um, go back, I haven't finished that slide. The, the creative, so it's no longer cramming. You know, when you are going to go to the US, you're going to go to the UK, you're going to go to uh, Canada, people expect that you apply your knowledge to the material rather than when they ask you a question, they don't ask you questions that like uh, we have in YX, like they're going to have to memorize. It's a different way of learning. And teachers are able to coach you and then you develop life uh, uh, long skills like collaboration, critical, because you're thinking about things. You're thinking about projects, it's project based, you know, so that's what it does for you once you're online. It's very different space entirely. Next, please. Go on. Okay, so what we learned during COVID, you know, for when we moved into online, we, we, we saw that it improved our students. A lot of them that were shy were able to start speaking well, confidently. It allowed them to communicate so much better. It enhances their technological skills, improves their 21st century skills, and then they're able to engage. So online is actually a very viable, and it actually prepares them for university. Because once you're in global now and you've been working online, when you get to university, in fact, if you don't even, if most, some universities give you the option of studying in Nigeria for your first semester, it's going to be going online. So it was a good thing that happened. Though COVID has been very devastating, but it was a good thing that happened in the sense that it's preparing our young people, independent learners, you're going to learn online. Once you get to university for the next four years, you're going to be doing a lot of stuff online. So it has allowed them to be prepared with that kind of environment. And it's also appealing to students of different learning styles. So for example, if you're a visual person, you like to see pictures, it allows you to go into the platform and explore. If you have a subject material, you can go to different um, apps and then in improve your, your uh, knowledge that way. So it, it makes you independent. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, just a few benefits, and I've spoken about them. I won't necessarily go through them. We are accredited. We have certified teachers. A lot of our teachers have been certified to teach um, this course, and they've done very well. They're very used to this. Um, they've been teaching, some of our teachers have been teaching over 20 years with us, you know, and, um, uh, you know, they have a lot of time to teach you. And sometimes even after school, if you have a challenge, you can come to them. And it's, you're not just limited to online classes. You can do also other classes and, uh, and, and text them and tell them whether you have a problem and they can send stuff to you. Next, please. So how has this impacted students? It's allowed them to be more independent, like I said. It's allowed us to track them as well. It's allowed them to track them and it's given the flexibility of online learning with support of face-to-face. -face. Additionally, students are exposed to use of technology devices and gain daily exposure to 21st century skills. That's how it's impacted our students. So it's a platform, it's a dynamic platform on Microsoft. What we're doing now is rather than coming to school, please go on and, and, and come and um, do boarding fees and all of these fees. There's a limited amount of fees that you pay and it's monthly. What you, you, you register for a course on the platform. You can see our website, which is there. Register for a program on the platform and you pay the fees. You know, we have an entrance exam on Saturday. Please let's have the video of some of our parents talking about our online course. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. My name is Modupa Ejikeme. Good afternoon, uh, distinguished parents. Uh, my name is Dr. Mwadiuto Inyakamwa. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mrs. Adonke. My name is Tinu Sanya, mother to Olua Shemi Lure Sanya. Following the global pandemic, the school has had to incorporate online learning classes to keep the children engaged. The school swung right into action. The online classes made my daughter more responsible for her actions towards her education. Global was very fast to, to smoothing the online classroom and make learning easy and flexible. 
and uh, I like the way the teachers are hands-on on the online. In fact, if they see your child not paying attention, you get a message. As a parent, I have observed several improvements and benefits in and to my child that were not present in the traditional classes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next slide. Do we have the testimonials now? Okay, quickly. Okay, so this is um, feedback from our parents. You can have uh, had, you know, 67% highly satisfied, 33.3% uh, satisfied with value, uh, value, value, value receipt for fees paid, you know, and the 67, sorry, 33.3% highly satisfied, 67, 66.7% moderately satisfied, 100% satisfaction with our online. So we did a survey and that's what we got. That's the student and parent feedback. Next, please. Okay, so this is what they said about us. Openness and empathy displayed as teachers and students at ease, maybe because both parties are operating from their comfort zone. What I like most about online classes is that it promotes independence in the children. They're currently able to sign in, attend classes, and do assignments research online with very little guidance. Heighten level of direct interaction between the teachers and students, which can still be improved on. So that's an excellent um, report from our parents about our virtual classes. Next. So uh, we are accredited by Ministry of Education, Centre for Cambridge, Centre for West African Examination, Centre for Exams in UK, Canada and USA. Um, we did our online exams here. So when you join us, we, uh, we have our accreditation there on, on the screen. Next, please. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Epam to take us through this process of what you need to know about the U.S. Foundation Program. Thank you so much for listening. Epam, over to you. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Osime. Such a detailed explanation. Um, I just want to welcome my audience once more. Um, welcome to this information session. It is important for us to do this because of um, the present normal that we have. Um, the basic question that parents usually ask is, um, what next after SS3? It is a very challenging question. I've had parents in a couple of days calling me now, saying that now that we have the situation at, at hand and students cannot go for school fair, how do we proceed after secondary school? As a matter of fact, we have a lot of students who are out of school not sure of whether they'll be writing their SSC exam, you know, and they're not sure of whether they'll be writing their SAT, you know, the whole confusion. But don't worry, this is why we are here. And having worked with teenagers for over 20 years, um, especially for those proceeding to schools in the US, I have come to see that there is really nothing difficult when you have the right information. With the right information, you can always make the right decision. So after secondary school, SS3, what next? Now, for some of you who probably um, in your own school, at best what you've been doing is the Nigerian curriculum and probably the British curriculum. It is important to state here now that regardless of the lockdown, it's for you to start preparing for your SAT. And to that end, we have classes online for the SAT training program. What is SAT for some of us who are not so familiar with it? It is an equivalent of the Nigerian JAM. So if you are going to university in Nigeria, you, you have to write the JAM, Joint Admission Matriculation Exam. But if you intend to go to the US, the exam that is very important for you to write is the SAT. Now, there have been a lot of debates. Is there a need to write the SAT? Um, can I do without the SAT? In my own candid opinion, I would say go ahead and write the SAT because it opens you to a whole lot of opportunities. It takes you to a different horizon. Yes, there is also the argument that I don't need to take the SAT, but it's going to shortchange you at the long run. So I strongly recommend that if you are out of school now and you have written your SSC, you've written your GCE or any of the school certificate, the major exam you should focus on now is your SAT. Because of the recent developments, SAT College Board has released different dates. We have an SAT date coming up in August. We have the one for September. We have the one for October, November, and December. If you contact us, we will just tell you on how to go about registering for that. Um, that will be an issue. And also to prepare for the exam. I also hear a lot of um, 
statements like, do I really need to go for a class for the SAT? I would strongly recommend that you take a class. Now, why do I recommend that? The reason people don't get such score that makes them competitive in their application is because they probably just dabbed into it with their Nigerian curriculum idea or the British curriculum um, idea. The American education system has its own uniqueness, which is why it is best for you to go to the experts that can train you in that regard. Now, when Mr. Sime was talking earlier, she said something that was very important, which I want to just uh, recap before I look at this um, next slide. And what is that which is, she said? She said there are a lot of students who are a fix now because they are done with secondary school, but they have not written their final exam, which is what we call the SSC or the WAEG. Now, does it mean that they are going to be stuck there, not know what the next step is? Don't worry, that's not an issue anymore. We are in partnership with a school in the UK, in the US, I mean to say, the Keystone School. Now, we are trying to see if we can get students to write the GED, which can also stand in for the SSCE. But while we are having that negotiation going on, it is also important for you to try and contact us. Our email address will be there. Phone numbers on people you can reach out to give you guide on all of that is there. Talking about studying in the US, there are over 400 courses at your disposal in colleges and universities in the US. And one thing that makes the US education system very important or very competitive is the fact that it gives you such an education that is a well-rounded one. It's not just getting out of school, but when you graduate from school, you become highly employable directly from school. But also most American schools will not train you to just be seeking for a job. They also train you to create your own job. Some of our students that have passed through all here, who's gone to proceed to the US and have graduated now, majority of them are developing apps, majority of them are developing small time businesses that can grow into something big. So the US education student system is a very flexible one. They are very entry requirements that you can use to get in. They have a very flexible mode of study. And the big one, which I'm here to share today is the fact that across the different country, the US education system provides the best scholarship offer. I have had students in my 20 years or more of working with students that have gone to school on full scholarship. By implication, I mean that they didn't have to pay anything. And all of this is based on one, knowing how to do your application, writing your SAT to give you a very strong edge, writing a very good application essay. And then the very big one is the AP program. Remember the process I said, when you are done with school, you take your SAT. And after your SAT, what is the next step? You start your application. Here at Global International College, we don't just get students to write the SAT and leave them at that, no. We are going to help them proceed to the point of doing the application if necessary, and also helping them with their essay. The very next slide, which is important, is to look at most important factors in college admission. The most important aspect in college admission. If you are writing, please take note. When you are applying to schools in the US, it is important that you have your SAT or your ACT score. And I always recommend that students should try and get above 90 percent. The maximum score for SAT now is 1600. And if you are looking at working with scholarship, and if you are looking at getting scholarship like what we have done for students in the past, try and get something above the 1400 upwards. It's not just to write an SAT and get maybe 1100 uh, or 1200. Get something above 1400, then you are sure that you are working around the neighborhood of good scholarship. Now, so we're saying that your SAT score is important, your curriculum is important, your GPA class ranking is important. Community service is important, and then some form of extracurriculum activity. At Global International College, in the past, we've had students to go to orphanages to work in the community. We've had students to do some sort of an internship, and then the driving school is there, you know, just to have an all round prepared student for school. If you look at the rating, let's take a chart. The SAT takes a big chunk of your requirement. Your application essay, your community service, and for some schools, if you want to apply to Ivy League school, 
you need to write the SAT2. The SAT2 is what is also referred to as the subject SAT, where you take subjects that are relevant to what you intend to study. You know, um, if you intend to study, say, anything in the physical sciences, you want to take the SAT2 maths, physics, and maybe chemistry. But if you want to go to the biological sciences, you want to do biology with chemistry and the likes of it. I strongly recommend that in all of your application, ensure that you are more than qualified because that same space that you're applying for, you have students from all over the world that is also applying for that. You have students from Asia, you have students from America, from Europe, and these students are not just gonna come in there and say, I'm applying, I don't have an SAT, can I get on board? You know, no, you want something that will give you an edge. So we strongly recommend that you write your SAT and ensure that you get scores above 1400. But if you are having any form of anxiety, how do I prepare to ensure that I get such score? Don't worry, just put your email address there in the comment section or the Q and A section. Just put your email there, someone will contact you and tell you how to go about it. When you are done with your SAT, here at Global International College, what we do is that we introduce you to what is called the US Foundation Program. The US Foundation Program is a one-year program during which you have the opportunity to write your SAT or your qualifying exams. Some schools will ask you to write the test of English. Either you're writing the TOEFL or you're writing the IELTS, depending on what the school wants. Some schools will tell you that you can come in and write your internal exam, your internal English exam or such equivalent. You know, some schools also give waiver. But in my experience, I have insisted and advised students to write their English exam because sometimes it's also needed in your visa application, you know. So you don't want to get to the point where you need to present this and you realize that you don't have it. So after doing that, your SAT, your test of English, the most important that I want to introduce today is the US Foundation Program. We have made our students in the past years to write this exam where they pick subjects from their first year courses. Subject from their first year courses. Uh, take, for instance, if I intend to study, um, say, business courses or management courses, I might have to take, in my year one, I will have to write microeconomics or macroeconomics. Then instead of waiting to get there, I can take those exams here. It is organized by college board. We train our students for it. They write the exam, and then they get the credit. Now I'm going to come back to what the relevance of that exam is. So during your one year here, as against what you have in some other schools where they just lump all foundation students. If you want to go to Canada, you want to go to the UK, or you want to go to Europe or US, and just put them all in one class and call it foundation program. We don't do that in Global International College. What we do is that we put students in specific department. Say you want to go study anything in the physical sciences, you're going to be writing things like your calculus, your physics one, AP physics one, AP physics two, AP um, physics C, you're going to be writing all of these because these are courses you will have to write in your first year. If you are going for medicine, of course, you need a bit of um, chemistry, AP chemistry, AP biology. You know, essentially what we do in the foundation year is just get you to write some of your year one courses. And I have had students that have come with wonderful testimony. And I've said, Mr. Ifam, thank God we took that course. When we got to school, it was a very easy and a seamless transition for us. Now, what is the importance of the USA Foundation Program? The first importance is that it's going to help you have a smooth transition. You won't get to school and have any form of anxiety and you know, have a shocker of the um, work pressure and all of that, no. Number two, when you write those courses and you get fantastic grades, say something above three points, because the maximum point is five, if you get between three and five points, when you get to a school in the US, you will not have to write the exam anymore. Now, it is also important, it is also important to note that um, if you want to save cost of university, in US university, it is very important for you to take advantage of your citizenship. I've had students or children that were born in the US and then they want to school elsewhere. There is no need to do that. Just stay in the US. There are some ways to cut down on your costs. 
And one of the major one is if you can go ahead and do the community service, the community schools, or take some of those schools that are not too expensive where you can get scholarship. I'll just give this testimony. Two years ago, we had a student that came in here and wrote his SAT fantastic score. And um, while he was writing this, he asked, how do I get all this benefit? And I said, just take your AP courses. He took his AP courses. And with his AP courses, he got fantastic scholarship that he did not even have to pay a dime for his tuition. Just for time's sake, I'm going to say that uh, if you have more questions to ask, you can ask in the question section. And then you can also put your email address there where we can give you more information. We're going to send it to you. And then you can reach me anytime to ask your question at Global International College. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ephraim. That was really, really good and very informative. Thank you so much for that, you know. Um, Choma, over to you. Can you tell us um, why we should come to the US and not the UK or not Canada? We can't hear okay. you. OK, good, good. Yeah, okay. good morning, everyone. I'm Choma. I'm glad to be here. Just like uh, Mr. Ephraim already said, U.S. education is still one of the most flexible, innovative, and creative. And I don't care what you want to say about it. In this, in this world we are, the U.S. education is still the number one highly recognized. If I go to the U.K. now to go work, because I got my degree here in the U.S., and I'm in the U.S., I'm going to get, I'm going to respect it. I'm going to be... I'm playing on a very high perspective. People will respect me for what I have to offer because of the training I already got from my education. So that's one basic reason why you have to come to the U.S. And plus, again, it's already stated. I want to highlight this one also. U.S. have very flexible, um, I mean, different scholarship availability. So. The scholarship don't just end at day one. When you come in, the scholarship goes on every semester, every semester in school. Like you are in school, you are doing well. The school keeps giving you scholarship and different, you get scholarship in different things. Your, your leadership skill, your natural talent, whatever God has given unto you, it's a scholarship for you in the U.S. Because every school, every talent is appreciated, and every talent has a team that will help you make it grow. So it's not like, oh, if you can dance and if you can sing, you don't have a place. No. Shama, do you want to shut your video no. down? Shama, because you're breaking. You're breaking. Do you want to shut your video down? Thing that has been happening, 
the prophets and trying to stand for the rights of black people. The U.S. is still a safe country. So it's just like in every country, they have little internal issues. So Black Lives Matter is just standing up for black people and making sure black people get all their rights and all their um, respect that they deserve to be citizens or residents in the United States. So that's, oh, okay. Okay, but um, let me see. Okay, is it better now? Because I don't know what you mean by, okay. So, okay, as you can all hear me, that's fine. So right now, like I said, the Black Lives Matter is just um, African Americans and other U.S. citizens and residents just standing up for trying to take the um, that Black people and African Americans are respected. So at this time, the country is still safe. Every state and every um, local local um, leadership have created ways to resolve the issue. So there's nothing for parents to worry about because it's not something that is going to be forever. It just happens like in every country, we have internal issues that sometimes need to be addressed in ways of protest. So that one day is just to wave away any fear at this time. You can still come to the U.S. and be safe. I'm here, I'm safe. Many people are here and we are still safe. We're not all dead. We're still alive by the grace of God, most important, okay? So number two, I want to talk about, um, just talk more or give more details as to what Mr. FM said about benefits of you being a U.S. citizen and studying in the, in the U.S. One of the benefits is because you're a U.S. citizen, first of all, you will be attended to faster because in the United non-citizen. So however... It does not mean that if you're not a citizen, you will not be treated right. But I want to speak directly to people who were born in the U.S. but grew up in Nigeria or you grew up any other country, right? Another benefit is you have more opportunities for any available federal government funds, federal government jobs. So if you're not a citizen, you do not work in the federal government. You work in any other company of choice. You cannot you can work in the state government, but you cannot work in the federal government. You cannot create contracts for the federal government. But if you're a citizen by then, or citizen by naturalization, you can work with the federal government directly and you can have contracts with the federal government. So now I'm speaking in terms of when you come to the U.S. and you get a job. These are one of the benefits. Just know that you are not limited. Another thing is, again, you're a citizen, you will be paying tuition for in state or tuition as a U.S. citizen. You are not going to be paying as an international student. There are three different um, tuition fees depending on the university. It's called one for international and non-resident. So if you're an international student, your fee is definitely going to be higher. If you're a U.S. citizen, you have two types. You have the residents, those who live in that state. Then you have or those who live in the neighboring state. Then you have non-residents, people that is the group you qualify because you don't live in that state. In the university, you're applying to or you don't live, you're not resident in the U.S. However, you can still get the tuition for non-residents and in some schools, non-U.S. residents, your tuition, and non-residents who is still a U.S. citizen, your tuition fee is very, it's going to be lower than an international um, person who is also a non-resident in the U.S. So I, I don't know if you understand it that far, but that's a very big benefit. And again, whether you're a citizen or you're an international student, you have equal rights for scholarship, depending on your academic performance or any, um, your skill set, your leadership, your community service, and all that Mr. Affan said is actually correct. So I'm just reiterating that part. So if you're a citizen, why go study in the UK and pay more money when you already have legal rights to even live in the US? First of all, you won't even be talking about visa. And that's another one. So as a citizen, you're even waived for visa. You, this, you're not gonna worry about, oh, going to immigration to get any visa and dealing with all that visa issues. So that right there has saved a lot of time, a lot of money. So all you worry about is getting to school and getting your accommodation. So it's good for U.S. born um, citizens, even though you're not resident, to study in the U.S. It saves you money, it saves you unnecessary hassle of visa, and you have rights to enjoy your citizenship. That's why you are a citizen. At least when you come here, you're not limited to job. And guess what? Because you're a citizen, and depending on the program, you can get started with an internship faster, faster 
than an international act born in the U.S., you also have equal benefits. So let's go over your own benefit. Again, you have rights to all scholarship. Scholarship is not restricted to both, to only U.S. citizens. Scholarship is, is given to excellent students. You are excellent in anything you have. If you're an athlete, there are scholarships for you, depending on what kind of skill of sports you have. Academically, it's always still the best. Get a good stat score, get a good grade in your O level, get, um, have some form of leadership or community services to prove that beyond school, you are also active in one form or shape in your society and you will be given scholarship. It's not, it, it's, and the type of scholarship you get, it's called scholarship by merit, meaning that you don't have to even apply to an, for, an, for scholarship in, in a separate application. You use the same application for university, your application to get into the school will be evaluated for your scholarship. So most universities, about 99% of the U.S. universities do not require you to write an external or submit, um, apply externally for scholarship. You are giving scholarship based on the one-time application and all your um, academic report, reports you submit, your SAT, your A-level, your foundation program, all those things really count, okay? Next thing I want to talk about is um, U.S. student visa processing. This is a big issue and it's a very important one. So let me go over how the process works. Before you can get to the stage of getting a U.S. student visa, there are different types of visa. If you want to study, it's called U.S. student visa. Now you have to first be admitted in a U.S. university. So we are at the beginning stage. At this beginning stage, you focus on getting your or all the required exam focus of getting your academic transcripts ready. When that is done, um, you get a good school, application is done, and the university decides. Once you are offered an admission, if you offer scholarship, it's going to be on that same letter to so say, oh, you also offer this type of scholarship. And when you are offered that, the next stage is now your student visa processing. And the university who gave you the admission, for instance, let's say you got admission to American University. American University is located in Washington, D.C., and it's one of the top universities there. You get admission to American University to study computer science, bachelor's degree, and you are to come in January 2021. This is an example. So Chama gets the admission after the university offers the admission letter. The same university will give me what is called my I-20 form. That I-20 form is the beginning stage of your U.S. student visa processing. It's that same form you will feel, or your guardian will feel, or your parents will feel, and that's the beginning stage of your application. When you feel that form, they determine, you know, everything is accurate. The university sends that document to the U.S. Um, immigration office, and the next um, document you will have is called the CV form. Now, again, that one, you pay the fee for that before you go and apply for your U.S. DSI-60 form online, your non-immigrant um, visa um, application form. When you apply for that one, the documents you need for your visa, student visa application is, number one, your admission letter, the same documents you submitted for U.S. university application the same transcript, the same financial statement, the same um, guidance, the same anything you put there will be repeated for your student visa. Um, a document, you supporting document you can submit. And when you do that, you apply online to get your student visa date. Student visa is an in-person visa. I know most people know about the UK. Most of the time you have to go. But in the US, it's an in-person, you have the interview physically, and you'll be asked questions by an interviewer before they can decide whether or not you should be, out, um, you should be approved for a student visa. So when that stage goes, obviously, by God's grace, you'll be approved. You can now come to the U.S. So I don't know if it's, it was easy enough, but if you have any question about that, let me know. Again, U.S. student visa is different from tourist visa. So some people, when the President Donald Trump gave a ban on Nigerian, limiting Nigerians from coming. He did not ban student visa. He banned unproduct, unproductive visas. So he banned the visa for tourist visits. Tourist visits where people give 
are, are given two years and they stay overstay their time. That's the visa he banned. He did not ban education because education is adding value to the economy of the U.S. So you're coming to school. When you start internship, you're already adding value. You're taxable. So you're already adding economic value to the country. That's why President Trump did not ban the student visa. So your route for student visa is different from the route of tourist visa or religious, um, religious coming, uh, people or religious people who come here. They also have their own kind of visa. So for the student visa, it's not banned. You can come in anytime as long as you can give your original documents and any required documents you need to have and show why you want to come to the U.S. to study and not cause harm. So you'll be given your visa, okay? So any question about that? I don't know if everybody got it. If you have any question, let me know. What other thing do you uh, want me to talk about specifically? I spoke about benefits for U.S. citizens. I'm having a recap. I spoke about the security. Um, you sh parents be okay. Black Lives Matter is, is not a forever issue. It's going to be resolved. And the security in all states have increased. So everybody should be respected and no life should be treated as a lower um, race than the other. Then the next thing I spoke about, the U.S. student visa processing. So any question? Yeah, thank you so much, Shoma. We'll come back to you for the question. Okay. I'm sure there, okay. there, there are a few questions that are there, so we'll come back to you when we take everybody. Thank you so much. That was really enlightening. Um, I would like to, you to speak to community colleges later, but I'll come back to you on that. Um, as we go on, we also have, um, before we start taking questions, uh, some of our young people are here, some of our um, students at Global International College who have been with us for nearly one year now. I would love them to just share with us their experience. It's nice to hear from the, the young people who are already, go, who have been through the course, who have done the exam. So, um, Adana Eze, you want to tell us a bit about your experience in Global, the course you did, you know, and what you felt about the course as you compared to WAEC, you know, what did it do for you? Why would you advise um, other students to actually do the SATs, to do the APs, or to do the um, full package, you know, generally? What would you advise? What would you say about the program itself? Adana. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Adana Izzy. Currently, I am a student of Global International College. Okay, so, um, the USA Foundation specifically has many things attached to it. Firstly, academics, because like, this is the main part of the program. So I would like to pick a few phrases from school mission statements, which is to provide high quality, innovative learning experience. And I totally agree with this. Um, I joined Global in the early weeks of October. And despite the fact that I joined a little bit late, I received a lot of support from a lot of people, both teachers, staff, and students. Um, beginning with the teachers, which were like the main highlight of the program for me. Um, in the class, the teachers were very supportive. They all knew our names and they all wanted us to get like very high scores in our subjects. Um, also, they had their times when they would be serious and say like, okay, this is business. You have to do this and you have to do this. And then they also had a time when they would like laugh with us and make us feel calm. I know that no matter whether we can get this five in this AP and we can really do well. Outside of even the classroom, my teachers would like nudge me to try out for things like I did not really see the importance of. And because of this, I have learned to maximize any opportunity that comes my way. Also, the students were very supportive too, especially during our exam time. Like some of them will call us and be like, oh, we have a class now. That's if a teacher should schedule a class outside of the regular timetable. And then we even went as far as like having um, a Zoom meeting just for like only students to come together and revise all that we have learned. Um, really, I also had a nice experience with the staff. Like, for example, Mr. FM, he would always come to class and make sure that we're not getting distracted. He could even go as far as, like, asking our teachers what we are school to know, like, oh, yes, we are really pulling our weight. Um, right now, I would say I'm more prepared for university. Because coming from a secondary school, where for me, cramming was, like, the basis of it. Like, I used to cram a lot in secondary school. So when I came to Global, I realized that, wow, cramming cannot take you anywhere. Like, you have to apply what you learn. It wasn't really easy, like, going away from this cramming, but then thanks to my teachers, friends, and everything, I was able to do it. Um, I already learned from SAT that application of concepts is key. But, like, going into advanced placement, that's AP, where you have to do subjects like physics, calculus, like, you really need to break down that concept and understand it step by step. Um, also, 
there are compulsory courses for us like communication skills and computer skills. I realized how important these courses are when I read this book my mom gave to me, the guide for international students when coming to America and Canada. I realized that most of the things my teachers said were actually like being highlighted in the books too. So because of this, I've learned not to like take any of my subjects for joke. Um, then coming to the importance of AP, like I said before, for some Nigerian students who are used to cramming, like this AP will like change their whole world because they realize that, oh, they have to like apply this concept. And I'm really glad I actually had this gap here because at first my mom wanted me to go from an all girls school straight to university. But then now having this gap here, I am so sure, not, like I am really, really sure that I'm prepared for university now because I even find out that I have to do um, an English language course, which is similar to like the communication skills I did in global. So, I mean, what are they, what am I waiting for? I'm ready to go for university. I'm pretty sure that I'll really do well in university. Thank you again. Thank you. Um, I wish, I mean, thank God we're recording. That's really, really good. I'm so happy. Even as a mother, I'm jumping in my seat. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. You know, because you said so many, 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 many important things. And it's always good to hear from um, our students their experience. So it's not just global saying it, but the, the students who have come through global and have experienced it. And, and she said quite a few important things that I think people should take note. You know, a lot of, um, a lot of parents know, you know, sometimes you, the, your students, you know, the students finish YX, IGCSE, and they take them to university without actually spending that one year in, in ensuring that they are prepared for university. It makes a world of difference, not only academically, also socially. Adana, Ada is, Adana went to a girl's school. So can you imagine she gets to, Choma, can you imagine she gets to one of those big universities and it's like 10,000, yeah. you know? I mean, all boys. And then she's there, she's, she's never been in a co-ed school before. So it was important for her to come into co-ed and then to understand how to relate with young men and all of that. So it's not just the academic, it's also the social aspect. And it's also important to meet our peers and also understand how to answer questions and to apply material, what she's learning to the questions and the concepts. And also, she also mentioned that they had a group together, that they were studying together. That's collaboration. You know, those are the skills that employers are looking for. You know, these are the skills, you know, that they, they, what, what, she's working as a team. When she gets to the U.S., she's going to have to do that. When you see the kind of innovations that are coming out of the U.S., you know, um, mm -hmm. you know that a lot of the students during their high school were not just cramming the stuff. They were actually doing project learning. They were coming together. They were doing innovations. People like Zuckerberg and um, some other young people, uh, Airbnb, most of them learned some of the stuff they started from school. So, you know, that's such a brilliant testimony. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I, I was really uh, impressed with that. So, Amanda, Amanda, is Amanda there? Amanda? Yes. Amanda, yes. do you want I... also, also to share with us your experience, you know, from the point of view of the university you picked and the course you want to do? Why did you, why did you pick that university? Why did you pick the course you want to do? Do you want to share that with us? Okay, so I just joined Global International College in January after I, mo I moved back to Nigeria from the UK and my experience, and I only had like a short experience with them before like the coronavirus and pandemic, but like my experience with them was still really good. Everyone was really supportive. The teachers were very helpful and like, even my maths teacher, Mr. Fati, was extremely helpful in helping us to like get ready for the SAT, which was in March. And they, they, it's been a great experience there. The people, are, it's a very supportive community filled with amazing people. Fantastic. Um, what what course do you want to do? Um, you still your course is still on, right? Because you joined us in January. Have you done your AP? Yes, I've done my AP exams. How was that? My AP exams went went pretty well. They were I, I was like I was adequately prepared for it. I I feel that my teachers were really great in like helping me to prepare. They were like really they were just really motivated and passionate about like helping us to understand these things and that just really helped me. 
So when you compare when you what you went to school in the UK. Yes. So when you compare that to going to the US, what do you think? What are your expectations of the US? I don't. I have different expectations of the US because I realize that the British and the Americans have like very different um, mannerisms, mm. and they they communicate in very different ways. Like the Americans are more friendly. The British are less. Um, <laughs> they are more like conservative. They're like mm. yeah. They're like just yeah. They are actually yeah. Yeah. So so you're looking forward to going to the US. Which university are you looking at? Actually, I don't plan on going to university this year. I actually plan on con on doing some more courses in global university, global college because I decided I changed my course, so I want to like study another one instead. Okay, fantastic! Thank you so much, so much, so glad to uh, hear your voice. We've missed all of you in school because we've all been in lockdown, so it's always nice to hear from you guys. Falumi, are you there? Yes, ma. Yeah, Lumi, so tell us a bit about your experience in Global and the university you're going to and the course you're going to study and just a little bit of speak for our audience who are here with us because you guys have been through the course. So just tell us a bit, you know, share with us. Um, in Global, um, I learned a lot of leadership skills to start with. In October, like when I came, like I didn't, I wasn't the, the outgoing type. I wasn't the, I wasn't everybody's guy. I was just telling me like, okay, some people knew me, some people didn't know me. So there was this time when we were doing the election for who was going to be the governor of the class. And then Mr. Ephraim recommended me to, nominated me um, to, be, to be elected. And then when he called my name, everybody was like, who is this guy? Like, who is this person we are talking about? So, I wasn't, I was really shy-ish. But with time, um, I got to know everybody. And another thing, and one very important thing Global taught, taught me was not to judge people. Like, when I came to Global, there were some people that I was already judging from orientation. Like, I, I, I can't, I can't, with this person I, I can't i can't this person is not my guy this this person is not this i can't talk to this person this person is not in my league this person is here but after two weeks i was like oh, wow like so i was judging these people and <laughs> some people that you, that you were expecting to be anti-social are very social and that is an example of the way college is going to be you can't just come there and think you know everything and you, and you know everybody. Another thing just was humility. So I was very good in class, but we were a team. It wasn't just me. It wasn't just Pelumi whenever we were doing things. So I needed to be, I needed to be humble and I needed to be mellow when it came to, when it came to talking with people. And one other thing about Global was reports like, I won't say I liked it at first, let me be honest. But reports were very important in my progress. Like if anything bad, if I did anything bad, like, or I didn't meet up to the standards of the test, there's no way my parents are not knowing. There's no way that thing is not getting to my parents. My parents are calling me the next day, saying, tell me what happened to your, what happened to your school? Because people like Mr. Ephraim, Mr. Godfrey, Mr. Fat, Mr. Jiro, they were always on my neck, always checking. Oh, Pelumi, you're dropping. Pelumi, nice job. We have improved. Mr. Ephraim was like a father to all of us. Like, he would go out of his way, even though he was busy, to check on us. And my advice to parents that want to send their children off to the U.S. is, I think we should be calm about it. In the sense that it, they are very different systems. Because, as Adana said, in Nigeria, cramming is very important. But in the U.S., application of co concepts is the most important thing. And when I did AP, what AP helped me do was restructure my mind to think practically. So now, based on the courses I took, I took AP Calculus, AP Physics, and AP Computer Science. When I... 
when I um, look at my surroundings, my world, the world around me, I can I can perceive the presence of physics. I can perceive calculus in my everyday life. For example, we just finished the AP a while ago, but on our group chats, one friend sent a video of somebody doing a double backflip, right? And he now said, oh, yeah, tell me, explain it to me using physics. And because Mr. Godfrey had already drew my head with AP physics, as soon as I saw it, I was able to explain the rotational physics behind it. And my friend had to say, ah, guy, it's true. They really, they've really dealt their heads here. So that's basically what I have to say about my experience. It was fun. It was enjoyable. And I'm going to miss it. Wow, that was amazing. I'm clapping for you here, Kwelumi. That was amazing. And then the thing is, you know, most of what we try and do in global is to ensure that you can, you know, subjects are not abstract. The reason why we come to school and learn is so that we can apply to the real world. That's the most important thing. That's why we're encouraging STEM. We're encouraging robotics. Because learning really is about ensuring a have a good career and a future. Yes, you have to do exams. You have to do exams, yes. But at the end of the day, it's positioning you to be able to use that material, all the information your teachers give, uh, have given you, to be an innovator. For example, all the physics, all the sciences, now you sh we're thinking about what is the solution to coronavirus? How do we get a vaccine? That's what learning does. So it's not just about the exam. So I love that example you gave, you know, about how you were able to, you know, look at the use it in a context that was different, but you could apply your physics. And that's the way to learn. That's the way to look at things, you know. So that was a brilliant one. And I like the idea of how you talked about how, you know, you were humble. You realized that coming to Global gave you a platform to be able to, it's a pre-university. So you thought that you needed to work as a team. You could not judge other people because everybody has a gift and they have a talent and they have something to share with you. You never know who God has sent to you to be a blessing to you. So when you go to university, don't say, oh, she's Chinese. Oh, she's white. And that's what, you know, some of this racism has caused. So you need to, you know, allow you to embrace everybody else. Because one day you might decide that you're going to work or do something brilliantly in the U.S. And you need a partner who is Chinese. So you might decide to come back to Nigeria and he's in, he's in, um, in the U.S. And you become partners and you are able to order things from China and he's able to bring solutions, you know. So it's a big world. That's the reason why we actually go and travel and go abroad or we encourage our students to go so that they can mix with everybody else in the world. So you have a global concept, perception of things, not just a local one. And when you go there, you come back and you come and, you know, use it in Nigeria. So I'm so happy with the sweet testimonies we got today. I think that was extremely brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for doing such hard work. Mrs. Osime. Yes. I have um, something extra to say. Okay, okay, please do. Yeah, I just really wanted to commend Mr. Efan because he has been very invested in our journey at Global and he has been like really extremely supportive of us. Like right from the moment I stepped into the school, he has been guiding us and helping us, even, even going so far as to check up on us daily. And I really appreciated that because he made like the difficult times bearable. So thank you, Mr. Efan, for that. Fantastic, fantastic. Can we give a virtual clap? to FM or clap or, you know, or, uh, re remove your mic and go clap for FM. Thank you so much, Mr. FM, for the wonderful work you're doing with these young people. And he's been doing it for tons and tons of students in global. He's been doing it for Thank the last you. time in nearly 20 years, you know, and he hasn't relented. You know, some people get tired sometimes, you know, of doing the same thing over, but it's a passion. He has come with a passion to ensure that young people will have a good career and a good life. And it is a testimony to him because so many of the alumni that have gone there have done well. Some of our students are in MIT, they've gone to top universities and they're doing excellently well. So well done, Efran. Thank you for your team. Thank you, Godfrey. Thank, Thank you, you uh, Thank you. Euro. Thank you, all of you. You know, you've done a fantastic job and we're hearing it before everybody today. You know, thank you so much. So we'll go Thank speedily you. on. So we just have time for the question. Um, thank you, everyone that has come. I'm just going to go to the questions quickly. Um, Damilala, can you bring the screen down? I'm not able to access your name with the screen up. Damilala. Okay, thank you. Okay, now I can see the Q&A. Okay, 
The first question is how much is SAT? We are charging a monthly, and we're of course doing a discount, uh, knowing what's going around. So it's going to cost about 80000 on a monthly basis for SAT. That does not include the exams. It doesn't include the material that is being, um, that's going to be bought, like the books and stuff like that, you know. Um, okay, we have an email here. What extracurricular do you offer? Um, Ephraim, can you answer that, please? What extracurricular do you offer? Yeah, um, we have extra curriculum like um, students going for their basketball. Um, we have uh, football, which is soccer as well. You know, they could also do that. And then um, we have a beat, which is not to, to a sport, which is um, them going for internship with the different uh, organization we are partnering with. We have engineering, we have medicine, and then we have some business courses. Um, this year, we intend to include um, internship with legal department and legal firms as well. So, you know, just to ensure that we have a total student that is well-rounded and ready for, for college life. Then we also, also have um, the, the driving school. Um, for the pandemic, this would have been the time where they are doing the final touches for their driving school, where we ensure that they get um, at least close to the American standard and driving license. You know, all of that is just to prepare them for college life. Yeah, excellent. Thank you so much. Because when you get to the U.S., I think from the age of 16, you're allowed to drive. Yeah. You can get a license. It's always good. My son, one of the things that he was doing before he left was taking driving lessons. In my knowledge, I didn't know from the age of maybe 14 or so, the driver had been teaching him. But when we got to the U.S. and we saw that there was no other form of transport, he came in um, very useful because he, could only, he only took the lessons a couple of times and got a license. And he's been driving literally since then, you know, and taking himself around. So it's a good thing to... Uh, uh, we offer that, you know, and also um, um, lifelong skills as well. We try and like leadership skills. We have um, uh, 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 alpha courses, which is looking at the Christian background of uh, our young people, preparing them. You know, going to, uh, to university is not a joke at all. So they take alpha courses, which is a Christian biblical course that they do when they're in global. And they have another one, I think it's the BMB that um, they have been doing which actually yeah. introduces them to the Bible and the foundation of the Bible. And when they get there, they know they can stand on their own. So no matter what anybody says to you, what you've learned in global is actually preparing you to make sure that you do not fall by the wayside and say, because somebody is smoking this, I want to smoke this. No, we have, we've spoken to them about the consequences of doing some of those things and what it leads to. And we are very happy that a lot of our students have gone to um, the U.S. In, in the last 20 years, we have not really had any problem or any parent coming to tell us that this happened, that happened, you know. So it's a good thing. And of course, also, we also talk to them and give them examples of young boys. Everybody knows about hot puppy house and took money. You know, what will happen if you go do Yahoo, Yahoo, or anything like that? You end up in jail. So all these kind of talks are so important for our young people to prepare them for any country they go to. So um, the next question is, what is going to happen? Uh, Shama, can you answer this for us, please? What's going to happen to those that have ad been admitted, have admission, but are yet to obtain visa since the embassy is closed? Okay. So I don't think it depends on the university. Some schools are currently offering um, online classes just for fall semester. So those who are admitted, their classes are expected to start towards the last week of four, um, August 2020, over to the school, let them know, and they will open up the classes for online learning just for four semesters. Then January, you can now come in for your next semester. So that's what most schools are doing, because we understand that many universities, I mean, many countries are still locked down, especially the U.S. immigration system. So. That's another option. Communicate with the university. They have open um, online learning. That will be the next step. After fall semester, you can come to the U.S. and continue your classes with regular on-campus learning. Thank you. So we have, yeah. for anybody that is interested, we have our, um, our partner universities are running online courses now. So if you mm -hmm. want to join, even from now, they're doing summer. They're doing the summer online course. And then from, the, from August, they'll start the online courses. For all our students that have admissions, they're going to start their semester here until the embassy opens. You know, I don't know. Do you know if the embassy is open? Is it open online like the Canadian one or it's not? Oh, so yes. In the U.S. one, it's, it's 
open. It just depends on the country. You know, okay. I know that Lagos, Nigeria is still easy now. But some countries, they are already open, like Japan and but stuff you like apply that. So here in the U.S., now? they are working remotely for the we visa. Can, yeah, we can apply online, can't we? Because online is open all the time. It's just that to get yeah, the you, you interview, can have, to get the Yes, date. you can apply yes. online, but you cannot have your interview yet. That's the only because thing. Because the interview has not changed. It's still in person. Exactly. So you can apply online once you have your documents and you have everything. You have your... Um, I-20, everything, you can apply. We assist also with that. If you're interested, you let us, you know, you know just cancel yeah. you on that and look at the papers and make sure you have the right document, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, so you can still go on with your classes. You can do them here for the first semester and then go on in mm -hmm. January as we watch what's happening. And because of the restrictions, because the airports are not open yet, so you really cannot go until the airports are open. Um, this question, I don't understand it. Can one get black book? Is, is this uh, Black Book 2020? Is that it's for textbooks? Universities? Textbook. Oh, okay. Uh, to yeah. buy in global. Yes, they can get from here. Okay, good, good, good. Mm. So you can get that to buy in global. Um, please, can you talk about community colleges? Uh, Chairman, I wonder if you actually talk about that a bit. Well, community mm. colleges, what do they stand for? What are the benefits to our students? Uh, basically, what do you think, you know, in terms of community colleges? Okay, so community colleges are like, um, let me call it like um, polytechnic. They offer two-year programs. So again, we have two types of community college. One, which is the famous one, and the ones owned by the state. They offer a two-year program, and when you graduate, you get what is called associate degree. Now, the benefit of community college is for two reasons. Number one, economy. So if you cannot afford the tuition upfront to go straight to a university, which is more expensive, you can use it. You can start with a community college. A community college, for instance, you want to do um, visual arts. I don't know. I'm just giving. Or you want to do computer science. It's also offered there. You come there, you do your program for one to two years, and you get your associate degree. And community specific, you can still get a good job here in the U.S. Because when you offer professional degree, all you need to back you up is what is called your license. So that one right there, the um, degree level does not restrict you from getting a good job as long as you pass your license. Now, uh, another benefit of going to a community college is, again, number one is strictly because of economy. If you're low on budget at this thing, you can come to a community college. The admission is always faster. That's another second benefit. The, um, the application process is faster and they have high rates of um, an international admission because it's a state, it's a state-funded thing. So each state want to have more level, higher level of um, international students in their state. That's what makes them more diverse. So that's one thing for community college. Then we have a second type of community college. This one now is the higher level. Those ones that don't have, actually have the name community in it. They are just colleges. Those ones are universities, but they are. They started out as community college and transitioned. So the university schools that are colleges, like Dallas College, those ones are university that start, they first of all started out as community college and transferred into universities. In that kind of school, you can offer your four-year degree program. So that kind of um, higher level, community level um, college, which is just called a college, you can, uh, you can go straight to your four-year degree program and you don't have to go to a university per se to get a bachelor's degree. From that particular college, you can get a bachelor's degree, like Morehouse College, it's one of the big, one of the best male colleges here in the U.S. You just go there, you get study, you study, and it's strictly bachelor's degree. So for both types of colleges, they only offer undergraduate program. You don't do any form of um, graduate degree programs in there. So community college offers two-year program. And the other college offer both two years and four years, but no um, graduate degree program. You cannot do master's, you cannot do PhD in them. You have to transition to a higher university that offers such programs. So again, a recap, it's affordable, it's easy to enter, and it's still good. So it's not like um, the way we perceive polytechnic here in Nigeria. It's actually hands-on. Most students here in Nigeria, most students who came from Nigeria to study nothing, and couldn't get into 
maybe the funds for real nursing school or university was high, they came here and did community college programs and they passed their nursing licensing exam and they're doing very well as a registered nurse in the US. So it's all about your budget. If you're low on budget, community college is an option and the learning intends on. So it's not too much story, it's actually more practical. You get it, the job done, create like your, she already said, everything is hands on, innovation, and you can still transition. Now, some courses, if you want to study medicine, you can take classes in a community college for two years, get your pre med classes. Then you now transition to the university after your first two years and continue to take two more um, pre med classes, or you go straight to medical school. It's, even, it's not strictly depends on your academic achievements. If you do extremely well, you just go straight to the medical school. If you do fairly well, you go to a university and complete two more years or actually one year of me pre-medical school before you transition to medical school. So if you want to study law, it's, uh, it has the same application. You take some um, pre-law classes, which are English and all those stuff. You take all those jury kind of classes, I don't know. When you take those classes in community college, you transfer it into a university and you can now proceed to study your full bachelor's degree law, okay? So it strictly depends on what program you want to study. Some, some community college does not offer all programs. So that's another one to note. So it is strictly, especially engineering programs. Some engineering classes are not taken in community colleges. But some and the engineers, few, it depends on the engineering classes, aerospace engineering is not taken in the community college. If you go to community college, you are only wasting your time because you're just going to be taking um, pre, 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 and when it's time to get your degree, you go back to university and start again. But if you want to study mechanical engineering, yes, you can take some classes from community colleges that are transferable to um, the university when you transition to university. Instead of starting from second year, you actually start from third year. So it strictly depends on what program, what degree program you want to study. And if, if your program is studied in a community college and you're kind of low on finances now, community college is the best place to start. They also offer scholarships and they are very hands-on. So again, just know that for kids because some kids are like, ah, they want something, you know, not too much book, book. No, you go there, you're going to do too much book, book and too much lab work. That's how it's designed. Yeah. So that when you finish your two-year program and get your associate degree, if you want to transition to university, you're going to start on third year. You're not going to go back and do 100 levels. So that's why it's designed like that. That is if you study in a community so, so, mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you so much. So Chama, basically, like, for example, if there's a student who wants to go to uh, University of South California, for example, and you're going for a program, some programs are very expensive. You have some programs that could be about $60,000. So, so the advice really is, rather than spending $60,000 every year for four years, you can save on the $60,000 for the first two years. What's, average, what's the average um, tuition fee for a community college that would feed a Southern um, University of South California or even Harvard or something like that? Because they, they have feeder community colleges. What kind of um, savings do you, do you have? Uh, what kind of tuition fee are we talking about? Some, some community college, like now, let's use the state of California. Now, there's yeah. something about U.S. Some states are more expensive than the other. So that's yeah. how you determine your tuition. The, the more expensive state, you pay more. Now, California is categorized as an expensive state. So if you want to go to, instead of going to Southern California University, which is owned by state, you go to community college in that county. So we have to look for the schools in that county where the university is located at. So in that county, you go to the community college owned by that county. So instead of paying $60,000, you are most likely to pay $35,000. It's mm -hmm. half the price of the university. Again, it strictly depends on your course, your course of study. Some courses are more expensive than the other. So you will save about 50% off or you will save about 40% off. So instead of you paying 60000 for first year, second year, you can use that 60000 to actually get into school. You know, in the community college, you pay half of that for two years, 
and you don't have to go again and start from 100 level. When you now want to transition to Southern um, California, Southern California University, now you are going to a higher grade and you are going to, um, um, you're going to be going to third year. And there's another benefit. If you had scholarships in your college of, in your community college program, it's transferable, especially if your academic level is good. So if the state of California, let me say Hollywood is sponsoring you, if you're in Los Angeles and, they, and you got the scholarship that is sponsored by the state, you will still qualify for that scholarship even when you transfer your grades to South, um, Southern California University. So that's another benefit. It depends on your, you know, you first of all, you save half of your tuition fee. You use 60000 to go do a two-year program. And if you're a good student, you have great academic achievements or excellence in your leadership or sporting skills, that is transferable, especially if the scholarship funds and the funds that are sponsored by the state and sponsored by some top um, scholarship organizations, let me say like Bill Gates Fund, it's also transferable. So it means you don't even have to worry what um, Southern California will be offering. You just continue with what you have. So that's another beautiful thing. You continue with what you have. Because anyway, it's still going to be the same fund. So if you were a star student there in your community college, wow, they will want you in Southern um, California University and respect your scholarship. And if you add more to you, depending on your degree program, what course you're studying, what kind of scholarship you got. So that's another very important thing to know. Thank you so much. That's excellent, excellent. I remember a student that went to one of the community colleges, he did two years, rather than going to university directly, did two years and then came out and did his uh, OPC. So he was able to work for uh, one year after the mm -hmm. after his degree and then used the money he earned during OPC to take, send himself to university for the last two years. So because he was doing some, a really top job, so he was able to do that. So there's so many ways. The good thing about the US is the flexibility and the op yeah. opportunity. My friend yeah. was just telling me yesterday about how you know, everybody, practically everybody that is working in the U.S. now has been given money, some kind of uh, policy for the next yeah, few months. Yeah. They are being paid yeah. salaries by government. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why they're out oh, there protesting. Oh. Because as they're protesting, they're earning money. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. God help you in Nigeria. Go and protest you on your own. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, those are the benefits. My daughter, who is a, an international like, student, she got, got, um, um, she got paid because she worked in campus. So she got, because she has a, she's a taxpayer, she was paid some policies. She was paid. Okay, can you repeat your question? Country, they give back to you. That's the beauty about the US. That's the beauty, you know. Okay, let me quickly take some other questions because we'll be running up soon. I just want to take this comment by our parent, um, Adana's mom. I think that's Adana's mom. I will, she says, I would like to thank Global International College for the great experience Adana has had so far. I cannot quantify it. It's a gap year, well spent. I will recommend Global International College to parents that want the best for their children. Thank you so much, Matt. That's such an awesome, awesome comment. Thank you. So I'll just take a couple more um, questions here. Um, I know that I saw some questions I wanted to address. Okay. Um, universities that we partner with, we, partner, yeah. partner, we literally um, don't say partner, you know, because all the universities in the U.S. it's open up for us to send um, young people to. Once they've done the courses with us, with College Board, basically you can just do the uh, general application, like in uh, Texas, they have the, I think, what do they call it? I think they have the um, common app. Uh, the common app. Common app. They have the common app. So you just apply to many uh, universities in Texas, or mm. if you're going to the northeast. So we partner with literally everybody, really. So, uh, but we have some specific ones. We have a, a, a company that we partner with that has, um, a, a, they were with us on Monday. They spoke a group of universities we partner with. So those ones are good. And those, they, they, they waive SACs as well. So University of Florida, University um, of Auburn University, quite a few of them. So they partner with us. So we have a group of those under that particular group. But we are open to send young people to any university in the U.S. So long as yeah. they do it, are good. So um, uh, are you in touch with activities like competitions and other things that can? Yes, yes. We do competitions here that improve because we know that the U.S. looks at not just academics. 
So we make yes. sure that our students are open to different things, like um, FM had mentioned, sports, and as many competitions, debates, you know, anything that is going that we can send them to, they, they take part in. And it really, really enhances their opportunities. Let me see if there's any other one that would need to be answered from the floor from our panelists. Okay. Um, yes, we do have the black book, right? Yeah, the textbook. Yes, yeah, we, we have it available. So if you want yeah. to buy, just send your email if you're interested in any information. Um, FM, Dami, can you put our details please on the chat for our parents and students so that they can come back to us? We have an entrance exam for USA students who want to join us for USA Foundation on Saturday. And, please. and just to mention quickly, Mr. Simen, mm. um, we have a class that is currently running for the SAT student, the virtual class. Um, there are two sections. We have the morning session and the evening session. Um, because we know that some students are probably still having their online schools with their respective secondary school, we have the evening classes that starts by 4 p.m. So once they can get in touch with our school, we'll let them know how to be part of that. You know, we have the morning SAT classes and we have the evening SAT classes. I cannot overemphasize this enough to say that writing and getting a fantastic SAT score opens up a lot of opportunities for students, ranging from scholarship to as many, as, uh, as high as maybe 100%, like, like I said earlier. So um, just be part of this, get in touch with us, and, um, and we, we would like you to be part of the SAT program. We have a, a stream that is ongoing now, morning stream and the evening stream. Get in touch with us. Thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, from Arnold OBBK, when we are a secondary school and a sixth form, we started as a sixth form in, uh, in 1999. And we, after a, a few years, we started the secondary school. We're actually a sixth form first before we're secondary. So we're both. So like I had said, even if you're interested in the grade nine to 12 for the American accredited uh, program, we also run it in partnership with the virtual school in, in um, US. Uh, Jason has asked a couple of questions. I think we've answered some of your questions, Jason. The benefits of a USA, uh, of a USA citizen for international, um, for in, what are the benefits for international students? Yes, for going to US. We've mentioned some of that. You know, you have the opportunity of working. You can work after you study. Even during your courses, you can work. And um, it's not so difficult. When you compare it to Canada, I, I, like I said at the last webinar, it's about the same, really. It's about the same. You know, and, it's, and racism doesn't get to passport, so don't worry about that. <laughs> and and I, I think it's just not, it's not even so much the racism, but the fact that police needs to be properly trained, you know. Yes, a little bit of racism is there, but I have never encountered racism in the last, how many years I've been going to the U.S.? Never, never, not once. So I know that it's a, 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 just a few bad cops that we, we're talking about here. Um, okay, let me see what else is there that we need to ask. Um, this has been answered, this has been answered. This has been answered, okay, okay. Okay, I guess we have literally answered. So I'll just go back to my panelists, one after the other. Yes, how can a child join SAT class? Please, can we put the details in there? Can we put the details um, of global, can you flash it up or something? Of how they can come because the SAT classes have started. Um, please put your email if you need information and uh, global can you put your details there for parents that are asking how their child can join the SAT class now because the class has started. I think the score is, the perfect score now is what, a thousand, what's this, FM, is FM there? Okay, he's no, out. Not. I think what, guys, what is it, is it a thousand six hundred now? 1,600. 1,600 is perfect. 1,600. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so I'm just going to ask each of my panelists to just say one word, uh, you know, just to say to uh, um, to thank you guys for for coming, you know, um, panelists for joining me today. I'm really happy. I enjoyed myself tremendously. Happy to have you. So I will just ask um, Shama, please, just some advice from you. To everyone. Okay, so um, thank you um, for La -la -la, having you, me. You, thank you, Damon. Let's see, Damon. Um, Shaman says so. This can come up after we've done. Oh, okay. She's covered your face. You can't see your face. 
Okay, okay. go on, Sheila. So, like, okay. you want me to continue? Yeah, okay. Please, please. So, like I was saying, um, it's good that you've experienced again. The United States is still a great country, and, and like we all talked about, flexible learning. You can work in school, and even as an international student, you are not restricted to work in big companies. The big names you know, your beautiful Facebook, Microsoft, they are powered by international people. It's international students, who, people like me and you, who came to the United States and we're working in those top of names. The World Bank, you know, the World Organization. So it's good to give your, your child the best education, and I think that's the best investment. So come to the U.S., it's safe, it's fun, and it's very great. You love it. So, and the schools are good. So I hope you join. I hope you get all the benefits GIC is offering you so that you don't miss opportunity again. Um, the next semester you should start focusing on is January because from um, fall semester, it's already closed in most universities, especially if you want to come for in person. So thank you. Thank you so much, Fiona. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. Let me quickly go to our students. One, okay, one minute, thank you, one parents. Minute, minute. If you have any questions, just... Um, uh, Pelumi, one word from you. To all your friends and neighbors and relatives that are watching, you know. Yeah. Because you're on Facebook as well, so... <laughs> everybody listening to you so just one word what do you want to say as a closing remark as a I, I want to just um, emphasize or we emphasize that if you did work or let's say you did IDCSE too I advise you go to global and do a gap year because if you, if for instance, you did IDCSE and work, you will see that you don't really have the time to fit in SAT into that your last year. That your last year is very hectic for you to do things like the SAT. And to be honest, when you get there, most people will start to shake. No matter how good you are, a change in system can really affect you. For instance, you can use meters. They, we use meters here, but they are more common with them um, feet. We use degrees Celsius, they're more common with degrees Fahrenheit. It will make you look like a back um, a backbencher in the class. Meanwhile, you're just not used to their system. So I advise you to do a gap here, get bridge that gap and go there and have the um, upper hand. That's just what I have to say. Fantastic. That's such good advice. Thank you so much for that. Adana, what advice do you have for younger people that want to go to the US, who want to apply? Mm, just like Pelumi said, I would also say like doing a gap year is very important, whether it is socially or academically, because there's some skills I've learned now that I don't think if I had gone straight to like university, like I would have survived though. But then thanks to Global, I think I'm going to do really well in my first year and the coming years. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. We've actually had quite a few students that have had to be sent back to us after they did their first year, second year flunked because it was such, uh, like Shalumi yeah. and Adana said, the, the language, the vocabulary is so different. You know, they're talking about uh, some of the math that they do, even in, in uh, Cambridge, is different because I think it's more of, um, mm -hmm. what's it called, algebra, more of all of that. Algebra. So it's good to do, in global, we emphasize that you do the curriculum of the country you're going to study. So if you're going to go to Canada, you do the Ontario Secondary School Diploma with us. If you're going to go to the US, you do the AP or you do the accredited diploma of the AP. If you're going to Britain, you do the TIE. So you are prepared when you get to university, you're not stunned by all of this. So Amanda, are you there? Just closing remarks, Amanda? Yeah, um, so yeah, I think that prospective students should choose GIC for their foundation year because like no other school in Lagos will be able to provide such a good balance of both a stellar education, including like the including the advanced placements courses and exam and an incredibly supportive and friendly community. Thank you. Awesome. That is so well said. That should be carved in stone. Thank you so much yeah. for that. Um, uh, and finally, to you, Ethan. Yeah, I, I just want to say that it's very, very um, 
interesting to hear students say this because um, sometimes you really don't know the impact you have in your life. And funny <laughs> yeah, enough, they have also impacted me. Um, they've, they've made me a better, a better person. And I want to say it's nice to have them. And to all the students out there, I would just invite you to come to Global, have an experience, and um, bridge that gap, like one of the students rightly said. I have a parent now who have just sent me a mail while we are having this chat. And this is what she's requesting for. If the son who is taking a summer class now in the US can have physics class with us. Because this boy did not do the gap year. He just took the SAT and he went straight to school. And that is a struggle for him in his first year. You know, so I strongly recommend that they do the gap year. Plus the fact that it's going to open up more um, scholarship opportunity for you. My candid advice to students is this, get the scholarship for your parents. Even if you have a billion kept for your school, a scholarship is a gift and a gift is always a gift. Get it for your parents. And you know, when you get into school or scholarship, it's a win-win case for you because you would have to maintain certain GP to keep that scholarship status. And in the press of trying to maintain that GP, you will only get out of school with a first class, worst case scenario, second class upper. Because of the shortness of time, I have more than five student pictures I would have loved to, to share with us now that just graduated in May, June, and they came out with a first class. I have a girl who just turned 19, and she got out with a first class in chemical engineering. Now, the reason is because this girl got into school on scholarship, 100% scholarship, and she was asked to maintain that status by keeping a GPA of over 3.5 over 4. So it's a win-win case. Students come into Global, prepare you for school. And then while you are there, you are going to keep that scholarship status and will, at the end of the day, work out for your own good. And don't forget, when it comes to internship, your professors in the US, they are only going to recommend students who are on their honor list for such internship that will eventually help you to get a good job. So it's just a win-win case. Don't rush to school, do your gap year program and be fully prepared for school. Thank you. Excellent, that was so well said. Thank you so much. And please, uh, Chairman and Co, if you have any friends, relatives in the US, it's cheaper for them to come online with us to do their tutorials in Nigeria than to go and pay dollars. So we, we are doing online, like, yeah, um, like that's FM correct. Said. Yes, yeah. it's cheaper for them because we're doing the SATs here. In the UK, they don't do the SATs. They don't do Even the, the AP. Run. And, and AP, they don't do the AP. You have to go to the American college to go and do it. But so we can tutor them here over the holidays online, even if they're in the US or in the, uh, they're in the UK. So tell your friends, tell your everybody, you know, we can do it. And it's Naira. So we're not charging dollars. So, and it's cheap. By the time you charge it and convert it to dollars, if you pay there, it's so much cheaper doing it here. So that's one other thing that will be great if some of them, in case they're in the university and they're struggling with some subjects, we can actually help them, associate degree, if it's up to that, we can help them one-on-one um, -on -one online. So on that note, I would like to say a big fat thank you. I really, really enjoyed this session. It was really awesome. Thank you so much, Yama, for joining us. Uh, thank you, FM, for such great words and the big, great work we've done with the young people, which they have said here today. And thank you so much, Pelumi, Adana, and Amanda, for the Is Naramalia and talk, but when we hear you guys talk like this and we see that you generation up to know that you can be a Zuckerberg, you can be anything you want in life, you know, it's so awesome to hear you. And for all our participants today, thank you so much, Dami, behind Age Euro, uh, Godfrey, all of you. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. God bless you all. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.